Pots versus dysautonomia. Are these the same thing or are they different? Well, when we look at this, dysautonomia is an overarching term, right? So if you think about like, well, I have a car, that would be dysautonomia. And it's like, well, what type of car? That'd be POTS. So dysautonomia includes, right, POTS is one of those, but you also have orthostatic intolerance and many other things, right? There's actually a laundry list of things that fall under dysautonomia. Whereas POTS is specifically categorized because of the length of times you have those symptoms. So typically anywhere from three to six months. And you've got to have certain heart rate changes when you go from laying to standing with having blood pressure be fairly consistent. So if you get a big blood pressure drop, you actually do not meet criteria for POTS by definition. Now this really matters the most if you're prescribing medications. When we look at really trying to treat this based upon the root cause, it doesn't really matter whether you have orthostatic hypotension plus POTS, right, or dysautonomia. It's really about trying to figure out what is driving the process. So it is a nervous system based issue, but the nervous system does not live in isolation. Please, I beg you, there's going to be people trying to do one thing or the other for the magic bullet. It does not exist with POTS, okay? I do really, really well with it, but it's only because of the approach I take. If I tried to make one thing more than I should, my success rate would tank. Till next time, this is Dr. Z, the Brain Guy.